one hand, joy to be joined by Caroline Hanlon. And you know, in, in life, it's given to very few to, to change dreams into reality. And that's precisely what Caroline and the Hanlon family are doing down there uh, at Bush. Uh, uh, is it Bush we're in? L Lordship, it's Lordship, Lordship which yeah, is just the out the road a little bit further to yes, Bush. Yes, it's in the And that road from, uh, from Dundalk to Green Ore, yes. out the halfway along there. And it's the Maria Goretti Foundation. That's correct. Ron, and yeah. it's to look after the needs. It's a specially built, custom-made building to look after the needs of uh, children from birth until 18 years of age who have very special requirements in their lives. That's correct, Rowan, yes. Tell um, me all about that. Well, basically, where it all came about from was uh, my late father, John Hanlon. God bless him. Yes. Um, he was suffering motor neuron disease at the time. And through that, he spent a considerable amount of time with a family that had a daughter with special needs, um, with disabilities. And from that time he spent with them, he seen the considerable amount of care and attention and the 24-hour care, really, that the parents had to give to Jodie. Um, the little girl, like she's 12 years of age now, and from birth she has suffered from disabilities. Like she cried for the first three years of her life, just constant crying. crying. Yes, so from spending the time with Jodie and her family, he, he just... He was amazed at the care and attention that uh, they needed to give her and everything like that. So we looked into the to see what kind of facilities and services and support really there was for Jodie and her parents. And from looking into that, he discovered that there wasn't really a whole pile and that there was a need for a respite facility to be set up. So from that, he organised a committee in conjunction with the HSE down in the south and um, he started off a committee. Um, unfortunately, it wasn't meant for Daddy. He passed away in 2008. Yeah. Uh, but can I say, it's the most remarkable thing for a man who was enduring his own suffering and making his own journey through life to his point of passing away, that he was able to spend time with a child who was suffering in the way you've described. Yes, yes, but that yeah. was Daddy. He always it's a had major a major outreach, that. Oh, major. And, uh, yeah, he, um, he always had time for anyone in trouble or anything like that. As busy as he might have been, or the sufferings that he would have been suffering, he always had time for everyone else. My God. Yeah. I remember him so well. And, uh, I remember, I remember uh, John Hanlon on the big day of the tractors. <laughs> yes. Tell the people about that day of the tractors. Yeah, well, back running into that, he, he was um, big into vintage in all matter of means. Uh, he ran a vintage day in Cooley, County Loud, um, from 1988 right uh, up to 2007. Uh, the big one in 2007 that you just mentioned, we organised for 4,572 tractors. To, 572 <laughs> to plough in one field at the one time. It broke uh, the world record um, attempt that, uh, yeah. that England previously held, yeah. and we broke it by a considerable amount. I, I, remember, <laughs> I remember Caroline writing about it at the time, and I said it was an event of biblical proportions, because <laughs> the photograph of the tractors, as far as the eye could see, is yeah. marvellous. Yeah. But John, John was a huge man, and uh, I remember him in the time before his passing. He told me of his acceptance of it. He told me of how difficult it was. But you saw the wonderful kindness that was coming through him. Yes, yes. And that, ki that kindness continued after his passing away because uh, John, John's influence motivated your lovely family to do wonderful things in Africa. That's you were there, and you you have helped build two schools with the uh, with the uh, Society of African Missions in northern Nigeria. Yeah. So you've done great great things, but your your caring takes you home again. Yes, yes. and the, the 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 first phase of the work begins. Uh, opens in February. That's correct. Yes, um, after Daddy's passing, the project kind of went. Uh, as such nearly died with him but then as time passed uh, we as a family wanted to 
see his dreams complete. And so back in 2011, we set up the project again. This is it? Yes, that's it. That's, um, wow. that's it under construction. In April of this year, um, we started construction. Uh, as you can see, that's the first phase, which is uh, four bedrooms. It will facilitate four bedrooms in this phase. Um, and this is due to open in February of 2013. And who will occupy the bedrooms? Yeah, it's children, all children um, from, as I said, the age of newborn to 18 years of age that suffer from any disability. Yeah. That's who it will facilitate. And they'll come there and there'll be a program of fun, yes. education, of yes. learning. Yeah, for the children and then it also gives the parents the few days of rest and yeah. for them to get um, sort of caught up in a bit of sleep and things like that because really I can only say from Jodie's parents' yeah. uh, perspective mm. but they don't really sleep. There's no point to take in turns every other night. Um, you know, so it'll give them really a chance to recharge the batteries and knowing that their daughter is close to them yeah. um, in mm. Lordship, it's only a few miles over the road and yet um, they know that they can still have, you know, uh, time to themselves yeah. for a few days. Yeah. That's what it is. It's to give them a few days, several times a year, uh, respite mm. for the but child to benefit yeah. and the parents. Yeah. Isn't it a wonderful thing that at, at this time of uh, difficulty in the, in the economy in the south of Ireland, that such a project is possible through the enthusiasm and the dedication of, of a private family? Yeah. Well, that's true. Um, it is. It's great to see it uh, finally up in, uh, up and running. You know, as such, uh, the building being built. But as I said, this is only phase one. Mm -hmm. We are wishing to complete a phase two, which is yeah. an additional four-bedroom um, facility on the same site. Um, and that is where, if any of your listeners, or this is why I'd like to stress that if anyone out there w would like to donate any such uh, monies towards yes. getting the second phase up and running, uh, or any fundraising or anything like that they'd like to uh, carry out, we would be most uh, grateful. I know, I As know. As you can imagine, it'd be great to keep the builder on site now oh, and keep yeah. the whole project keep it all moving, moving yeah. and get it complete by really the end of 2014 yeah. and have it all up and running. It will be great when one side yeah. is done but we will be we're anticipating to get the second side there's, done. A, there's a big need for it there really is um as i can say uh jody herself um at the moment the, the little girl with the disabilities she has to travel to dublin her closest respite wow, is dublin. dublin yes and she only gets to go for three days so really the parents are traveling up one day having to sign in fill up all the forms to come home that night the, the second day they have all to themselves but on the third day they're, they're the traveling back again. up to Dublin. Yeah. So really they really only get the one day fully um, yeah. uh, free to, you know, to recharge the batteries. Yeah. But here in Lordship, you know, they're only a few miles over the road. Uh, you'll be there, you know where Jodie is. You're more at ease, to be honest, that yeah. she's going to be she's close, close to, to home. Them. Yeah. So yeah. it's for, going to be for children like Jodie and parents um, in the area or in the northeast to um, to be able to yeah. get this facility. And fundamentally, Caroline, this is a project that grew at the kitchen table of your family. Exactly, yes, yeah, yeah. Well, that, that's where a lot of uh, Daddy's ideas grew from, was the kitchen table, to be honest. He was a very, um, uh, you know, civil man and never wanted much, but he uh, always had a big dream of this to happen and we're hopefully going to make fulfill that dream and make you it come will. true. You will, of course yeah. you will. So. Let's tell people uh, how they can give a donation. Yes. Well, what do they do? Uh, they can contact us. There's a telephone number. What is the telephone number? Yeah, Let me write it down, then I can promote the telephone number Grand. after you've gone and do it on the programme <laughs> constantly. Grand. Uh, it's 00353. Z it's from the north. 00353. 42. Three six. Three six. Yes. I'll say that again. If you have a time to get a pencil and a piece of paper, uh, in order to give some support to this wonderful Maria Goretti project in Lordship in County Louth that caters for the needs of children who have special requirements in their lives, and to allow them to have a safe place uh, where they can go for respite and uh, respite for the parents and give folk a, a bit of a break. And that's that's happening at Lordship. It's. Zero zero three five three 
4293-731-36. And is there any, you know, is there something yes, there's else? there's an email address as Email well, is? Uh, Maria Goretti M-A-R-I-A Goretti G-O-R-E-T-T-I Foundation at gmail.com at gmail.com that's Maria Goretti Foundation at gmail.com. Why have you called it the Maria Goretti Foundation? Yeah, the Maria Goretti was um, a saint that um, all our family, daddy included. Was she one of the children at Lourdes, no? No, she no. wasn't actually, no. But she was a young girl who died at a young age and was canonized, um, um, you know, uh, later on than after her death. But um, she was a saint that all our family prayed to and still to to this day. So... We wanted to name it something that we would relate to uh, in Daddy's memory um, so that we'd know the good work that he, he done yeah, to make this yeah. possible. I, I, I can't help but return finally to the, the excellence of John, of John Hanlon, because I, I, I was a virtual stranger to him and I went and did the story in 2007 That's right, yeah. and got to know him then and then came back to do a nationwide and we just grew a little bit close yeah. in the last in the last year of his life. And I'll always remember saying, and this was a very human conversation that occurred in your, in your kitchen. He was in his chair, he wheeled it in. That's right. The electric chair had come in. I said, John, how are you? He says, Rowan, I'm not well at all. And I said, ah, uh, oh, you look good, John. He says, no, it's no good, Rowan, from the tip of my toes to the top of my head. And he said, I've been to Lourdes. I think he'd been to Lourdes. He had been, yeah. And he told me about that. But he has gone to heaven, a great man. Yes, that's And true. His, his legacy, his legacy remains both in Africa and now in the Maria Goretti Foundation. Well, that's our hope and dreams, that it will always be there. Well, we're here to help make that hope and dream come true. And next week in my column in the Newry Democrat, I shall be writing about the Maria Goretti Foundation. Well, thank you very much, Ron, and thanks very much for having me here today. No, and you're so putting welcome. It out there. So welcome. And John in heaven, God bless you. And Put a good word in for the rest of us up there. <laughs> I think he can do that. Hopefully That's, so. And we'll tell the people again, you can help these wonderful, wonderful people building this respite center for sick children down there in Lordship, just on a neighbor's garden down the road a little bit. 00353 4293 731 And the Maria Goretti Foundation. M-A-R-I-A, Goretti, G-O-R-E-T-T-I, the Maria Goretti Foundation at gmail.com. Thanks for coming in. Thanks very much, Rowan. God bless you. Thank you. Go well, take care. Thank you. Some